And then look at the billionaires, because Bloomberg has a hobby of listing billionaires. Nobody cares about billionaires. He is no longer his number 23, he was 24, maybe next year, less forecast. No, but anyway, but, so, but look at these billionaires. How did they become rich? They become rich from valuation, not from cash flow. So you got rich you know, over that period by funding, oh, third round. Now the company is worth $2 billion. It's all paper, for God's sake. It's paper. So that modus is gone. They don't realize what's going on because it takes a while and because they don't have the education. When you spend 15 years in that environment, you don't know finance. So they don't realize what's hitting them. So you have to go to people who are either have gray hair or happen to have a library or have a grandfather, or grand uncle, great grandfather, someone, someone to talk to because to see what's happening, it is much worse than you think. Okay. So all these companies were using the stock market and or private or, and or some round 21 investor or, okay. As what? As cash machine. You want cash? No problem. Round whatever. We get cash. Oh, the company now is valued more. Okay. And everybody's happy or was happy. So now you got to make money. We see it was Twitter. <laughs> this uh, fellow bought that, uh, com that company, Twitter, you know, okay. But the, the brilliant financial mind. So, but the, uh, you know, and now he, he learned about cash flow. You know, <laughs> they have to make, you have to pay, pay the rent to something like that. It doesn't come from, you know, it doesn't rain money anymore. So what I think is happening now is, well, I don't know if you know, uh, I mean, uh, about bleeding, you know, experience, I'm sure you haven't because you're alive, people here, but usually when people start bleeding, they lose blood at period T plus one. <laughs> they have less blood at T plus one than it did at period T, you see? And, so now we have a phase of bleeding. What is bleeding? It means earning less than 4.75% <laughs> because that's where short-term interest rates are. So if you're earning less than say about 5%, you're losing money. You have to borrow money. You got to pay 5% plus whatever is premium. And if you can find someone foolish enough to lend you. Right. So that discount rate now is between four and 6%. So think about what we're facing now. That's called bleeding. Because if you're not making that, you're not making money. Not only you have to make money, but you can make more than that discount rate. The, sec the second problem, this was a lot worse, is that people think that the Fed, having raised rates, has engaged in a temporary measure. No, no Donald Trump is, here, around here, it's not in White House. Okay, so the Fed is not. The Fed is going to keep raising rates, or keep rates higher than zero. Okay, because they discovered that zero interest rate policy doesn't work. And another thing that people don't realize is that zero interest rate policy seemed to create some cosmetic growth, but it created a lot of inequality. And now people are talking about inequality. Who made money? Those people you see out there in the restaurants in Miami overpaying for uh, for uh, for microscopic sushi. You can see it on the plate. So all these people, the people who made money, it, it created inequality because we had an asset-based inflation. All these years, assets were inflating like crazy. It's like a tumor, I think, is, is the best explanation because that's typically what happened to organisms. You're happy with the growth, with uncontrolled growth, and then boom. I believe that the stock market is way too overvalued for interest rates that are not 1%. So unless they miraculously bring back interest rate to 1%, which they won't be able to, you will have interest. I mean, it's unsustainable. Why should you put your money in the stock that gives you 2% dividend yield if you're lucky? when you can get 4.75% from the bank while playing golf. Explain to me you know, the, the, the logic, right? So, so this is why the stock market has to adjust to normal levels 
And and again, we haven't had that much growth over the past 25 years to justify this valuation. So it's just air. You have good news and bad news. The bad news is that things react very quickly. Look at what happened, how how fast that uh, you know these prices adjusted up after the the recovery post COVID. But so the best of bad news, the good news is that all these squeezes resolve in glots and this is much faster than in the past. So let me give you an example. 1973, uh, those of you who, I mean, uh, not many were even toddlers then anyway. So 1973, there was an oil embargo. So you had a complete change of structure to accommodate higher oil prices. It took till 1981, two, three, for oil prices to become soft and then eventually collapsed and it destroyed the Soviet Union. Cars used to be, you know, you could have this party in one car, you know, and then they shrank dramatically, but it took a while. Today, the adjustment for Germany took one year. Putin played his game on Germany, thinking it was 1973, and look, I am, you know, the Pasha. How long it took? Nine months later, you had a glut of gas, natural gas. So the the, the, the adjustments are much faster today. The, the, the price of containers goes up dramatically. Bicycles, we had a shortage when COVID came. And guess what? Now you try to buy a bicycle, they give you two with it, you know, so... so. So, so you have these things. So this is why I think that we may have a uh, some softening in many, 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 many prices, maybe not immediately labor, but doesn't solve the problem. We still will have interest rates higher than two or three percent, and we have to go back now to the real world. See, uh, Warren Buffett is still alive, thank God. He will teach us how to invest. As you know, markets. You know, they have mood and mood swings. I see that. I see people panicking all the time on Bloomberg TV trying to tell you it's, it's all okay, it's all going to be okay. So you can have a lot of these people showing up to say, oh, it's all going to be fine, all right? So in other words, things won't be fine for a while. It, the, 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 the situation today, and Mark has pointed it out, we, are, we have more debt than we ever did in history. We have the weirdest valuations in history. And we have uh, a lot more connectivity than we did before. So add these things up and, and realize that, hey, you know what? Disneyland is over. The children go back to school and then make sure you're home. So now we're going to go back to the new world. So, so, I'm do- so how, what, what, I mean, of course, it's not going to be all bad. Uh, you know, it's fine. Enjoy your drink, but it's not going to be uh, uh, as 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 smooth as it was for the last 15 years. No matter how bad it is, it's going to be worse elsewhere. Okay, because um, and you can see it. We raise rates. It's bankrupting Egypt, it's bankrupting all the the weaker credit countries. It did harm Europe quite a bit. When Brandon went to Italy, it was like 123 euro, and then. It was like one, one, what the big figure changed by the time, you know, I went to Italy. <laughs> so, so like, because in a couple of months, like 98, 97 for me. So do you realize, so I think it's worse elsewhere. It's much worse in Japan, uh, but they know how to handle it because they, they're Japanese. So they have the structure, the social order, all that. Uh, but they have a huge amount of debt in Japan. Uh, it's much worse in Europe because they like they like a good life, you know, and 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 they sort of like they they like fables and and ideas. So Europe is a lot worse. Uh, so so it's gonna be good to be here rather than be over there.